Let's head into the papers now, see what the headlines are across Nigeria this morning. And I have with me in the studio, uh, Dario Dufawakon. Uh, he's a journalist to do justice to this. And certainly my colleague is here with me as well, <laughs> Kemi, on Hi, this Mike. side. Right. Right, nice to see you. Thank you very much for coming, Good Dari. Morning. Good, morning. Good. Let's uh, start with the Blueprint newspaper. Blueprint is focusing on security. And he said, for security concerns, Nasara monarchs reject local for Sanusi settle for our way. Now, local residents say village unsafe. Legal team challenges banishment, gives 24 hours ultimatum. And the CUPP mobilizes 3 million naira for redress. And El Rufai gives Sanusi appointment and ex monarch sanction for being Kwankwaso's loyalist. Uh, this is credited at uh, a statement from the government of Kano State. Okay, now move, moving to the Daily Times. Concerns as federal government sets to take another $22.7 billion loan. This is on the Daily Times. Infrastructure power highest beneficiaries. And every cobble from loan will be accounted for. That's the minister uh, saying this. Uh, the minister of finance is uh, quoted as saying this. And certainly on the front page of Daily Times to see uh, uh, infographics of, of the breakdown of, of how the monies are going to go, the power, infrastructure, communications, economy, and social investment, all taking different amount of billions of uh, the dollars. Okay, uh, Kemi has the rest of it. Absolutely, Mike. Uh, well, I have the nation, uh, the leadership uh, newspaper, leading with uh, still on the big story around uh, the deposed Emma Sanusi. Now, leadership is saying he has relocated to Awe as his lawyers vow legal action. And uh, then a rider deposed Monarch rallies support for new Emma of Kano. Kaduna government offers him board appointment. That's for the leadership. News Direct is also leading with the dethronement saying that Sanusi is heading to court and governors have power to dethrone traditional rulers, says presidency. Well, that's uh, the, the much for the papers at this time, Mike. All right. Now, uh, Dari, the one of the stories that has been on uh, the front burner for all Nigerians, apart from the coronavirus that has uh, uh, got people uh, becoming too conscious uh, of movement, is the dethronement of uh, uh, Emir of Kano, Sanusi, uh, Muhammad Sanusi II. Now he has been uh, sent to Nasarawa State, and now from local where he oh, yeah. first arrived, we understand he's been taken to our way now due to security concerns. W when you were following all of these things, I wonder what was running through your mind. A lot of people say, said, well, we saw this coming. Did you see it coming? Yes. Uh, uh, every other person who followed the face off. Hmm. See, I, one thing I appreciate is one of the reports we just read that the, uh, it credited to the government of Kano State yeah. that it was deposed for being a loyalist of the former government. Mm. If the government is coming out to own up to that, sincerely, other than get angry with the government, I'm very pleased and I'm happy. It's government is saying the truth. Because that's what it was all about. Well, I, I wouldn't say that. But if that report is Is anything true, to go by? Mm. Then the government is just owning up to the truth. And this will help alleviate whatever anger and wherever caught us. Because anybody who followed these two people since Gandhiji became governor, mm. since Gandhiji fell out with Kwakwanso, mm. will understand that if Sanusi is not dethroned, he will only manage through the stay of Grand UJ as governor. What did I make out of it all? That clash, unending and incessant mm. clash between traditional system mm. and the government, especially democracy. Mm. Since the two had to survive side by side, mm. there has been this clash unending. You see, the system is such that the traditional leaders have always been total rulers in their own right before the coming of modern governance. Mm. The new Oba or Emir or Obi had stories of how his grandfather mm. or great grandfather ruled supreme. Exactly. And people he paying allegiance to, to his grandfather. So this mm -hmm. argument of um, monarchs 
to be seen and not heard is rather it alien. Do, it will be difficult if, if it will ever get to that at all. You see, we must understand that what happened between Ganduje and Sanusi is not peculiar to them alone. Mm. We had the Dasuki case. Mm. If you go back in time, 80s or early 80s, the Awujale of Ijebuland was deposed exactly. by Governor Bishi of Nobanjo. Nobanjo. One governor that turned out to be today referred refer to as one of the best. But that was one action he took. And anybody who followed that will know that it was because of the Awujale's loyalty to the mm. National Party of Nigeria, yeah. MPN, as against Onobanjo's UPN. Yeah. And the governor did not hide the fact. Well, one time, Emir of Gwandu was also uh, deposed. deposed. His deposition was political. The dethronement of Dasuki cannot be taken away from politics. It was that struggle between the traditional system and the government. And we will keep having this. There is a bill generating serious controversy in Ogun State as we speak. The House of Assembly is debating a bill that wants to alter the way kings in the state will be enthroned and how they will be buried when they die. That is, to many people, and to me, an affront on tradition. Irrespective of what our religion, religions are, the traditional system cannot be taken away from its roots all mm. of a sudden. Absolutely. We saw what happened on Ibadan. When the governor came and said, we are going to have plenty and numerous uh, obas all over the place, creating obas from ballets, from uh, uh, village heads and from family heads and all. <laughs> Eventually, even the court nullified that process. Which the brings us to the issue of, uh, we saw what the Governor Ganduje did <laughs> while Emma Sanusi was reigning, bringing out four uh, Emirate mm. councils. Uh, five. Said, mm. said to, okay, absolutely now to belittle uh, the, we took down the, the power, power, the you, power that, that of, of but so what happens now with Emma Bayero? Yes, uh, Emma Bayero only got uh, elevated from the MB, the from MB one of, of the new Emirates mm. to the Emirate of Canada. And that and now tells you that there is a problem with the entire system. So an Emir can move from any of the other Emirates and become the Emir in one. You see, already early in the system, we are saying that it is not going to be as smooth as whoever the proponents are expect. But can we fault Ganduje for wielding the powers mm. of a governor? I would say no. Can we blame Sanusi for standing yes, for wow. what we believe in as a traditional ruler? Mm. I would say no. So okay. what's the problem? <laughs> the problem is that constant clash. All right. That we will keep experience. There, there has to be a seamless we balance between find the a two. Way of balance. We mm. no, no, we've not made efforts. Mm. If you look at one of those areas, those calling for restructuring, are really talking about is the roles of traditional rulers yeah. in government. Uh, have the laws helped? The, the, the law says the constitution is supreme, but then state by state, they are now bringing out their own individual laws, which yes, seems to clash. Those are bylaws. Those are bylaws. Those are bylaws that are consumed yeah. under the constitution. And so, based so on the no principles of delegated legislation, right. yes. in the constitution is allowed. It's allowed, so, so but those Ideally, there should be no clash. Are subsumed hmm. under the constitution. Yeah. We are a bylaw. Clashes Absolutely. with the constitutional provision. We yeah. know what is no, supreme, so the there should be no clash. Exactly. Takes precedence. Yeah, supremacy. Yeah. But in this particular case, the presidency has come out to say governors can dethrone traditional yeah. rulers. The process where, of whether, where, whether it follows due process is another no, thing. Is, is another a, thing altogether. That's where we've, and then okay. what is due process? All right. We are one governor can decide that this traditional ruler has to go. We we, we are then not doing enough to save or guide traditional rulers True. and ensure they still have mm. a voice. Yeah. That we, sh we need to look at it again. It shouldn't be just the governor. There should be a process involving other people's opinion. If we say the Council of Traditional Life will now look at the allegations, mm. then the Chief Justice of the State will now examine the legal implications and legal uh, arguments, then the governor, if the, that man is found guilty, can now dethrone. Mm. Maybe it will be better. Mm. But this power given to governors <laughs> to say, I can throw you out. We saw it being used for political purposes. A governor belongs to a political party and is going to campaign. All the traditional rulers will line up with him. The opposition 
comes to the same town to campaign and is an orphan. The mm -hmm. traditional land are not with me. The government of the day. They stay with the man in power. Mm. Otherwise, they will be Sanu size. <laughs> 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 uh, all right, Dari. Now let's let's go to Nasarawa State now before okay. we before we leave uh, briefly. Now, what do you make of uh, the the traditional rulers in Nasarawa State coming together to say? Well, uh, we are we happy to have, you know, give him motivation. We are happy to have him amongst us. Uh, local is not good enough for you. Let's, let's take you to our way as the case may be. That's cooperation. What do you make of it? Yeah, it shows uh, two things. Hmm. One, the traditional rulers in Nasarawa are not in Kano. Hmm. The Ganduje cannot <laughs> penalize them. Absolutely. So they found their voice. Okay. That is one. Two, the, that it took... Traditional rulers who do not have access or who do not have control by DSS uh, or security agencies to tell a sitting governor that where you are sending your deposed emir to is unsafe tells a lot. Hmm. It shows that, like we say, we need to review that aspect of our concern that gives the governor that sole power hmm. to do and undo with traditional rulers. Right. Why send him to an unsafe place? Why local? Why not that away where he is now? That yeah, before dethroning and deposing him and banishing mm. him, you should have done all the stations have been you arranged. You are punishing mm. him for him to. You are correcting him. Mm. You are not condemning him. Mm. Is that sending him to a place that is unsafe? So much so that traditional rulers have to tell you that like you are condemning him to his fate. I think powers should be exercised cautiously. Then the, the aspect of banishment mm. in modern day. <laughs> I am happy, Sanusi says, I'm okay with being deposed as Emir of Kano. I enjoyed my six years, and that is the wish of Allah. Mm. However, his legal team says they are challenging his mm. banishment. Um, let's text that in court. Absolutely. In court. You exactly. said I can no longer be an yeah. Emir. I, must I, I be I, confined I, exactly. to... Exactly. I am now a private citizen, so let me enjoy the constitution that, and the privileges of a citizen. Yes. Yes. Dari, thank you so much. All right, Dari for welcome. Thank you so much for coming. It's a pleasure. Program. It's really interesting with you. Yeah. And uh, Kemi, my colleague, thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. <laughs> well, talking about the paper review this morning, indeed it's time, and I am not alone to... Uh, review the stories or the big stories in the papers today. I have with me two gentlemen in the studios. Uh, the first is uh, Mr. Razak Olokoba. Good morning. Thank you. And Good morning. welcome to the program. Thank you. Uh, also, Dario Dufawoko. Thank you very much for joining us. All right, let's head straight to the papers this morning, beginning with Blueprint, where uh, the paper is leading with uh, Nasarawa monarchs rejecting local for uh, the deposed Emma for security reasons uh, concerns. Finally settled for our way, local residents say village unsafe. The legal team challenges banishment, gives the 24-hour ultimatum, while uh, political group now COP mobilizes 3 million naira for uh, redress in court. Uh, Governor of Kaduna State reported there, given uh, the deposed Emma appointment and uh, ex-monarch sanctioned for being Kwekwanso's loyalist that that is from the Kano government. To the Daily Times now, where the big story there is concerns as FG set to take another $22.7 billion loan. Infrastructure, power, highest beneficiaries. Minister saying every cover from the loan will be accounted for. There's also a breakdown of the loan's key components. Let's check out the leadership. Sanusi also leading there, uh, relocating to Away as his lawyers vow legal action. Deposed monarch rallies support for new emir of Kano and Kaduna government offers him board appointment. To News Direct now, still on the dethronement of Monday, Sanusi heading to court. Governors have power to dethrone traditional rulers. This is from the presidency. Also, the nation outrage over banishment of deposed emir Sanusi. Lawyers are talking at Tedo Peterside and others all ruling the confinement illegal. ex emma relocated to Awe, uh, rulers in Nasarawa seek comfort for the former monarch. Still on Emma Sanusi leading the paper, Daily Trust that he's, he's heading to court now to challenge banishment. 
Further riders there saying uh, the new Kano Emir will receive staff of office today. El Rufai appoints Sanusi vice chair of Kaduna board. There's also a rider there reading uh, Sanusi wants Lagos but was moved to local then away. Finally at this time is Daily Sun. Up there it's reading EFCC to issue criminal warrant against DA Zani. Dethroned MS Sanusi dares Ganduje from exile. Legal team to challenge removal, moved to new location, and yet another, uh, yet another reaction. Banishment is an infringement on his rights. This is from Sislak. Gentlemen, that's uh, what the papers are saying. But Mr. Lokoba, what do you make of this um, allegation of um, opposition of the government saying the former ML was removed because of his um, allegiances to former governor of Kano State, Kwakoso? It is uh, important to uh, resolve uh, contradictions uh, in our polity uh, because I, I don't see what has happened to uh, Sanusi uh, as a correct move. Why would you be doing that to our best? If it can be dethroned, there's nothing wrong in allowing the man to live the rest of his life the way he wanted to live it. First, it's going to attract more expenses to the government of Kano. And all of us are saying that former governors cannot be paying paid salary for the rest of their life. So why will someone dethroned to also be on the post of a, leave him to live his life? That's number one. Number two, these laws were in place long ago when Jaja of Okubo was removed by the British, now now official Kriegelelo of Dami, and it's an oppressive law. You say the, the uh, uh, kings, our kings, Aimeas and Obas are under the local government chairman, but they pay prominent role, constitutional review, mm -hmm. the, the president will come to uh, Ife, he will go and see of Ife, he will go to Kanu, he will go to and see all these Emias. So these are contradictions that we have to sort out. But the situation on ground now calls for Budget and tension. The first thing is that uh, the government of Kano State has created a terrible indelible mark in, on the image of Kano government and they have to address it. You are not supposed to banish Kan uh, Sanusi to such a place. You, you have to give something befitting. If Ganduja is in peace today, will you be banished from entering Kano? You can't be banished from. So any law that says that uh, if a king is removed, should be banned, is a primitive it law. It has no and place. That's law, that law, we have to deal with, with it. Today, anything about our culture that will prejudice us as primitive people in the face of the rest of the world, we have to deal with it. We can't do that. I mean. In fact, our own position, when we talk about restructuring, is that uh, the kings play a prominent role in our polity. And that's why we said there is no country that can prosper with a borrowed culture. It is only the black people that are attempting to do that, and that's what, where we are today. That contradiction, the British culture, the Western culture, the African culture, we can't depart away from it, so we have to streamline it. So our, my own advice as a civil society is that uh, we condemn outrightly what Ganduje and okay. the government has done. All right. Uh, Dario Dufoko, <coughs> how do you react now to uh, Mr. Lokoba's you know, position here, especially with the issue of uh, the place of British culture, culture traditional culture also coming to play. There, there, there does seem to be a clash in this uh, present case. Yeah, and I said it earlier this morning that uh, there will always be that clash between the traditional system and modern day governance, be it democracy or military rule. Because the traditional rulers understand where they were coming from. I mean, their forefathers being who they were, and they, they are on the throne. But I don't think it is just good enough to say we'll keep changing our tradition or our system to suit modernity. There are some of these things we just need to keep. One of it is respect for these traditional relations, in as much as we still want them to be there. They are the, the, they are the natural rulers of the people. A governor will be there for four years, at most eight years. He will go. A traditional ruler will be there for life. 
So even when you have power, in the exercise of that power, you have to be circumspect. Knowing fully well that the people will remain who they are after you have left office as governor. I am not making case for Sanusi. I don't want to. Because looking at the issue, I think Sanusi himself should have been more careful as an emir. The way and manner he went about the face-off with the governor was not careful enough. The Gandhi already did four years. He has another four years to go, at most. A traditional ruler of Sanuti's status should have been able to manage him. Let him do his four years. Let he will be out time, of office in no time. Will be up eventually. And then you will still remain. And then you will be able to talk about the Ganduja years. Freely. Freely. The way a traditional ruler in Ogun State, who used to line up behind the Muslim and put their hands behind their back, they found their voice when he left office. They are now telling us how he stabbed the system, how he ruined the local government. Imagine the same set of traditional rulers who were in office, who were there when uh, Amosu crowned multiple robbers all over the state. They were the one the new governor set up into a committee and said, review this hmm. exercise. And you know what? They did not find any of those others worthy. They advised the new governor, remove all of them. They were done haphazardly. The former governor was just using uh, his power anyhow. They were traditional last when he was made, this was made. But why did they keep quiet? They kept quiet because they would have been dethroned for daring the governor. So the issue so, of tact, uh, so, so the issue of tact now is, is, what, is what you are raising. But, the, but then- Sanusi was not tactful. Was not tactful. Let me, let me craft um, my, my question this way. Uh, this issue of the powers, uh, of, of the relevance of traditional rulers being at the mercy of the gov governors of the day, there's been the yeah. argument that there are some states it cannot happen. This is not the general principle everywhere. In the southwest now, uh, I, I can say like if you look at the only of Ife no, now, is, for, for, for example. It is what about it's a universal law that they under local thing. government, but because of the moral, the, it's a moral thing that gives them that places them higher, though puts them in local government. All the MIAs, all the Obas, is on that. But because of moral and because of the fear of the popularity among the people, that's why they assume larger than life life before the governor. But in actual fact, when short turn to push, they will always seduce them to where what the law says about them when there are crises between them. But see, beyond that, we, we, we knew what we paid for democracy. And when you see people turn with your democracy, either you are noble. Adwa, you are a cleaner. With the due respect to the people who clean, the, do, do that job. You have to say something. Some governors are torn with our democracy. And that's what Sanusi is saying. He mentioned quota system. He mentioned, he said that in 30 years, we can't continue like this. So the Sanusi we know couldn't have kept quiet. Yes, in, for in me, for me, he has done the right thing. It's only in this part of the world that we say that prominent people are not supposed uh, to, it's prominent people that are supposed to be talking because they have a lot at stake. When something happens in the country now, the first set of people that the rank and file will go for are the emirs, are the billionaires. So they see the picture of what is coming in the future. Look at Bukwaram. Nobody did not warn that the way religious crisis happen in these states and in the north, that you keep going after people in the name of religion, you keep going after people who are not northerners. See what has brought us. Nobody, nobody cautioned them. But they, learned, they have learned a lesson from that that something terrible will happen in the future if you don't stop what we are doing now. And that's what Sanusi is trying to do. And that's why we have to protect our democracy. Ganduji, where was Ganduji when we were defending our democracy against the military? So all these people that are rubbishing the democracy that we all fought for, we have to tell them that what they are doing is so what Ganduji is doing with our democracy is wrong. I am not opposed to Sanusi being removed. But when we use personal issues to interpret the law, that is what, what is not correct. The rest of the world are watching us. Queen of England is about the most powerful man being in the world today because he doesn't need to be sad to travel to any part of the world. He's respected. Contrary to the view that we think that it's a ceremony, it's not saying when I go and look at the British law, it's powerful. He endorsed the, the right. prime minister. So in Nigeria too, let us accord them the respect 
that and, they and, deserve. And preserve, preserve the culture. Gentlemen, we have, we have run out of time. I appreciate all the valid points you have both raised. Dario Dufoko and Razako Lukoba. Many thanks indeed. It's a pleasure being with you. Into the papers now, see what the headlines are. And I have with me in the studio journalist Dario Dufawoko, as well as Razako Lukoba. Gentlemen, nice to see you both. Thank you, Mike. Good morning. Now, let's begin with the blueprint newspaper now. Uh, for security concerns, Nasara monarchs reject local for Sanusi, settle for our way. And local residents say village unsafe. Legal team challenges banishment, gives 24 hours ultimatum. And CUPP mobilizes 3 million naira for redress. El Rufai gives Sanusi appointment an ex monarch sanction for being Concoso's loyalist. Uh, this uh, statement is credited uh, to the government of Kano State. All right, from there, let's go to the Daily Times. Daily Times says uh, concerns as federal government sets to take another $22.7 billion loan and infrastructure power highest beneficiaries. And every cobble from loan will be accounted for, as the minister is uh, assuring Nigerians there. And the, the, the Daily Times has a breakdown of uh, all the areas that uh, uh, the monies will be going into. Power, for instance, we have about $5 billion. Uh, infrastructure, we have about $9 billion. Uh, communications, we have $828 million. Economy, we have $3 billion. Uh, social investment, we have $1 billion. Okay, and uh, there's also a breakdown from where all the monies will be coming in from. So it's obvious the money is not only coming from uh, China Exim Bank. It's also the World Bank is part of it, Africa Development Bank, Islamic Development Bank, and others as well. All right, from there, let's go to the leadership newspaper. Sanusi relocates to Awe as his lawyers vow legal action. Deposed monarch rallies support for new emir of Kano, and Kaduna government offers him board appointment. You have that on the front page of the leadership newspaper. News Direct is next, and it talks about the, 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 the dethronement. And Sanusi heads to court, and governors have power to dethrone traditional rulers, says the presidency. Okay, that's the News Direct. Now, the nation is next, and it says, Outrage over banishment of deposed Emir Sanusi lawyers, Atedo others, confinement illegal. Uh, ex Emir relocated to our way, and rulers seek comfort for former monarch. Okay, that's the Nation newspaper. Daily Trust is next. It's focusing on the same thing. Deposed Emir Sanusi heads to court to challenge banishment. Sanusi wants Lagos but moved to local. Uh, then away. Uh, dethroned Sanusi makes case for Emir Bayero, a new, um, new Kano Emir to receive staff of office today. And uh, Rufaya appoints uh, Sanusi vice chair of Kaduna board. Okay, from there, let's go to the Sun. Daily Sun is the last paper we're looking at now, and it's also having the same thing. Dethroned Emir Sanusi dares Ganduje from exile. A legal team to challenge removal and moved to a new location. Banishment infringement on his rights. Uh, Sislak is saying this. Okay, uh, gentlemen, the, the, this is still one of the biggest stories in Nigeria besides uh, coronavirus and other issues, but this is the biggest story that broke uh, 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 yesterday. Now, when it comes to the way forward and how things have been right now, uh, Razak, let me start with you on this. I wonder what impact this development is going to have on the way, uh, the, you know, at the, at the aftermath of a de dethronement of a traditional ruler. We've seen several dethronements and they accept their fate and then they are detained, and for the rest of their lives, they spend it in some kind of confinement. But this is challenging that, which certainly is a way of also testing it. Well, things change all the time. And uh, it's time to uh, be specific mm -hmm. about uh, punitive measures. If uh, he has done something that uh, warranted his detriment, we have to limit it to that, to okay. that punit okay. punitive measure. Okay. Is, uh, a method that is used to by the uh, British to subdue the us. The colonialists. Uh, to, su to subdue, mm -hmm. and done for several of our kings, Jaja of Okobo, Nana of Ishaikri, Gilele of Dan, of Rame of Benin. And Kosok of Lagos. So many, many, many like that. We, that's the point. And it's to put our kings in check so that they can always accede to uh, their demands. But once we came on board, we should have done away with it. Okay. Particularly, Having realized the importance of uh, 
uh, the King's Obas and Emias uh, in our polity. We have to, someone must have the courage to speak out and change it. Yeah, if he has done something, as he has been removed. You don't have to infringe on his right, but also limiting his movement. You, you, you have realized that uh, every people in the world must make contribution to the world economy. So if you have to ban him, that's number one. The minus again of it is that uh, the state will also be responsible for feeding the staff. Or it, it, you can't be running our nation like that. Again. We have to cut it. Again. We have to do uh, away with it. Kano states occupy a very central uh, uh, role in the economy of Nigeria in terms of uh, population, in terms of uh, uh, prominence. So this has also created a distraction for the polity. We should be banned. We should be talking about coronavirus. We should be talking about plunge in our revenue. Okay. So this is a big distraction that is needless. All right. All right, Dari, uh, just about 24 hours, uh, Sanusi has, uh, Muhammadu Sanusi II is already getting an appointment. We hear, we hear that uh, there, there are some news making the rounds that some countries will be, will be ready to uh, you know, appoint him one way or the other, or even get appointments from international uh, organizations. Just like uh, Ngozi Okonje Wela got appointment in South Africa right now, uh, what scenarios? What are you looking at? No, we will start from the one back from home here. <laughs> uh, Kaduna. Mm, yes. Governor Erufa mm. he wasted no time in uh, announcing that uh, the deposed uh, Emir, mm. if he is willing, he will now be the vice chairman of uh, one of his agencies. Mm. It's, I think it's more symbolic than it is uh, real okay. or practical. It's more simple. It's just his way, in my opinion. It's his way of saying, oh, that's a talent there. Hmm. Kano is doing away with. Okay. That's just his way. Because, and then it's, it's, it's important for us to say that the agency in question is being shared by the deputy governor. Hmm. So it's not just any other yeah. agency out there. Yeah. So it's, 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 it's his way of saying, this man can be useful and it's also a challenge to the banishment, hmm. even before testing it in court. So it's a, a subtle way saying, of protesting it. It's a subtle way of saying he won't have to sit in one place. Okay. It's a subtle way of saying, let's, don't, don't let's waste him. Hmm. You are banished to Nasarawa. I've appointed you in Kaduna. In Kaduna. Hmm. He won't work from home. So I align totally with uh, the message Erufa is trying to pass. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a very good one. And I hope Sanusi will be taking up the appointment so that it will be a basis for him to argue in court. For example, look at, I have a job to do in Kaduna. So if I need to move. So this banishment is an infringement mm -hmm. for my desire to, I mean, exercise to still be my productive. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. of productivity. Okay. That is what, Talking about international agencies, how the issues pan out in court will determine that. Okay. Sanusi is not the first traditional ruler to be banished in Nigeria. We saw others during the colonial era go through their banishment mm. in peace to death. Yes. We saw others during the military area going through their banishment in peace to death. But I know there was an Emir, I think, in Gwandu, mm -hmm. who challenged his own banishment. Exactly. And I think. Uh, in I think around 20, 2013. Mm -hmm. he, was, he returned to the throne or something. Or oh, his banishment was. Or the case. But I, but let's put it. He was mildly. banished and sent to Nasarawa State. And then he challenged mm -hmm. it in court. Mm -hmm. So it is good. Let Sanusi go to court. He has made a statement mm -hmm. that he will not be challenging his dethronement. Mm -hmm. He prayed that the people should support the new. But his legal team has made it clear that we will not have this in place. And I think we will be wasting a lot of talent yeah. in Sanusi. He, he, to he is an intelligent economist. He's yeah. intelligent. He can do a lot to. Mm. Look at it this way. The way it is, he cannot even contest an election. Oh, yes. If uh, he does not go to court <laughs> and challenge this. Okay, we, ha we have to leave it here now because of a want of time. Thank yeah. you very much, Dario Dufo, for coming on the program. Razak Olokoba. It's a pleasure. Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Right.